friends, this is uh, Sports According to Neil. And, well, I'm back. I've been moving up to college here at CMU, which it looks like around here. We're in Lars Lear. So, um, my blog will now be being made from here. Um, hopefully with more writing. I, ha I haven't quite had the uh, time to make uh, as many posts but as I would like to, but now I'm with uh, my new technology and stuff, hopefully I'll be able to make uh, some videos for some of the longer posts, like today, which is the which if you haven't heard, but it's the uh, top 25 for college football. But before we get to that, um, back to uh, why I'm making a video. It's uh, I'm a little bit constrained for time at college, so uh, whenever I want to, I'll be making a video and hopefully be keeping you with some writing, maybe some little more tidbits that I find around the internet lying around, and put them here on the blog. But all right, so college football, <laughs> top 25. The AP poll came out today, or and uh, I really <laughs> some some of the teams I agree with, a lot of them I don't, but this is how I see it, and I see things a little bit differently. Maybe not buying as many teams as uh, the writers are, but I uh, have my own little version here. So kicking it off, ta. Top 25 here. So 25, I have Arkansas, who, once again, uh, big SEC team, and I feel like they're going to be doing good. They lost their quarterback last year, so they're going to have a little bit there. But they will still be a really good team. You know, they'll have to fight through the SEC, but uh, without Ryan Mallett, their quarterback, uh, it'll be a little bit tough, but they'll still get it. I, I think they'll still get it done and land at about the uh, 25 position here. Uh, 24, I have another SEC team in uh, Florida with Jonathan Jonathan Brantley and company. I feel like they're going to be able to make a nice run in the SEC and hopefully uh, land at about 24. Uh, with all the uh, competition in the SEC, they will, won't be able to make it so high, but it'll be steps back from the past couple of years with the Florida team and they will be making great leaps well, maybe not great leaps, but, you know, some progress, <laughs> to say the least. But in Florida's eyes, still need to do better, but, hey, they're rebuilding at the moment. Um, then, at 23, we have Missouri, who I know they lost their quarterback as well, but they're in the weakened Big 12. So I still feel that they'll be able to get some great... Uh, lower team matchups will be able to fight get some good positioning and get up into the top 23 or in the top 25 landing at the 23rd position uh 22 i have the one you've all been waiting for michigan with uh, denard robinson and company they'll be able to make a good run this year better than most michigan teams in uh the past years here but with uh hulk they'll hopefully be making it back up to the top they might contend late for a Big Ten title, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting with some of the teams they have to play this year, some of the bigger teams. Uh, of course, that big Ohio State rivalry every year, that might get them. Uh, Michigan State's tougher, Nebraska's tougher, so we'll have to see from there. Uh, at number 21, I have Notre Dame, and I'm not really buying this Notre Dame bandwagon that everybody's going on. Of course, you know, they got the defense, but they have that uh, QB controversy, and, you know, they got some great... Uh, wide receivers and tight ends, but uh, I think a lot of people are basing what they see here off of last year's bowl for performance, which is against Miami, which every year is overrated. And trust me, this year they're not in the uh, top 25 for me or the AP, though they still receive votes. I don't think Miami's that good, um, and Notre Dame beat them in the cold, and in a bowl game I'm pretty sure the Miami Hurricanes didn't want to be in. So not buying Notre Dame with a uh, Kelly and such, but they'll they'll still be pretty good. Finish twenty first. Uh, twenty. There's USC, who amongst the suspensions and such will still have a productive season. Be driving uh, with Matt Barkley. They'll still be able to make it quite deep, but twenty is going to be where they about where they land, I believe. Uh, let's see. Nineteen. I have Penn State. Always a hard nosed. Uh, team and with Joe Paterno making it back from his hip injury I think Penn State will be back on the rise and once again a tougher Big Ten but uh, still making it uh, as good as they can they'll have some key games against like Ohio State and Wisconsin 
but hopefully they'll be able to do as good as they can, um, and they'll, there's, they're going to be one of the top teams in the Big Ten this year. At 19, I mean at 18, I have West Virginia. Now West Virginia, you know, you're saying a Big East team, why are they ranked up so high? Well, I think they're actually pretty good. So they'll be doing uh, really good uh, if they'll win most of their Big East games. It's those out-of-conference games that are going to be some trouble, but Hopefully, by the time that they uh, make it through, they'll. I still think that they'll be really good. Big East champions, for sure. I don't see another team coming out of there like a Connecticut last year. And they'll obviously be going on to the uh, BCS game, well, one of the big bulls. Um, 17, South Carolina with uh, Stephen Garcia coming back off of his recent suspension. They'll be able to hopefully navigate their way through a really good uh, SEC schedule. Um, you know, like I said, uh, something like an eight and four in the SEC is probably about a, as good as a ten and two in any other conference. So working their way through, they'll be about seventeen most of the year. Uh, Michigan State, the one you've all wanted to hear, at sixteen, uh, still doing good with uh, Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. They'll be making it through. Um, still with tough games against uh, Nebraska and other top. Big Ten, uh, Big Ten uh, teams uh, won't quite make it to the Big Ten title game, but they'll still have a really productive season. Um, I can see them making it to a pretty big bowl game. At 15, I have TCU, which, uh, you know, last year in the Mountain West Conference, they'll be making the trip to the Big East next year, which will be really exciting. But this year, really productive uh, year. They still got tanked. They lost uh, Dalton, their quarterback, so another big thing they got to fill but I feel like they can fill it and with a weaker conference schedule they should be able to make it rise up to about you know 15 maybe a little bit higher but besides that you know I'm really looking forward to the B, uh, Boise State uh, you know game this year they're gonna that's gonna be a great game electrifying two great teams that are rising from you could say the lower ranks of college football and hopefully making there to stay because I really like seeing that but at 14 there's Georgia um, coming I feel like they're on the comeback from their recent um, stint at number one you know a couple of years ago um, back when CMU played them but yep they should be doing really good um, in an SEC schedule once again really tough they'll be making it through and I think they'll fall at about uh, 14th uh, 13 I have Ohio State which amongst which um, the making it they'll be making it through all the suspensions uh, you know losing trial prior and all that uh, and I think they're gonna be able to battle maybe not battle enough but they'll be able to battle because you know <laughs> whoever's backing up trial prior isn't just gonna be some chum off the uh, street he's just gonna be he's not gonna be that bad so and plus I don't think any of these suspensions are on the uh, defensive side of the ball where they are absolutely solid so at 12 there's Wisconsin they will have a Monty ball and such and they'll be playing good hard-nosed football once again that big 12 I mean big 10 brand and they will certainly be a power to be messed with I'm pretty sure they'll be going to Indy for the uh, big 12 I mean big 10 title game excuse me but and they'll be doing really good uh, I think they might run into some problems if they ever versus uh, Nebraska in that Big 12 title game but uh, we'll just have to see at 11 Oklahoma State uh, in that weakened Big 12 I mean yeah Big 12 conference uh, they'll be um, hopefully maybe getting through some of the games with Oklahoma I don't see that much uh, Texas A&M and uh, Nebraska I mean and Oklahoma are the only two that I really see them maybe slipping up against. They might have one other slip up in there. But before I continue to my top ten, I have to say, with the Big Ten and Big Twelve uh, keeping their names, it's been really confusing for me right now talking to them. And I wish they'd change them. You know, you got to keep the uh, the Big Ten can't be the Big Ten when there's twelve teams. I know when there's eleven, you in history and such, you really need to change it. Pac Ten changed it to the Pac Twelve easy for me to remember but it's hard, it's getting confusing with all these big 10 and big 12 and you know just a little rant in the middle of here but they should change it and maybe you should all write in like uh, politics <laughs> no just kidding but really we i hope that gets changed sometime soon anyway back to the top 10 
where I see in number 10, Texas A&M. Great team. They'll establish themselves as the best team in Texas. Um, maybe not the best team in the Big uh, Big 12, but having a great team, having a great year this year. Uh, maybe slipping up against Oklahoma. Maybe somewhere else. Who knows? They'll do really good though. Uh, number nine, Florida State. Well, you're like, whoa, ACC team in the top 10. Geez, I haven't seen one up here before. Well, they'll be good because supposedly, and I think, and I believe in it. Um, E.J. Manuel, the Seminoles' new quarterback, is supposed to be this year's Cam Newton. And if that comes true, watch out for Florida State with that weaker ACC schedule. Um, big test early, though, against Oklahoma, so we'll have to see what happens there. But they will be outdone by number 8, Virginia Tech. Beamer Ball has been doing it for all these years, and I don't think it's going to quit. Virginia Tech is obviously the ACC's premier team, the best team as it, is, as it stands right now. And unless Florida State can do something about that, don't see it happening. They're ACC champions, obviously. And, yeah, number eight. Uh, number seven, I have Boise State, which I know they always get ranked up, but I really think they're that good of a team. You know, they just got to get past some of their games this year. Really easy conference schedule. They, If they are uh, able to do that, I'm pretty sure in the blue turf they'll be able to, Kellen Moore will be able to lead them to almost a top five rating. Maybe get into a BCS Bowl, but who knows. Uh, number six, I have the newcomer to the Big Ten, Nebraska. I feel like the Big 12 and the Big Ten, not even uh, close. But with that, uh, Nebraska will be number six. They'll have an easy year this year with Martinez uh, chucking the ball around there. They'll probably beat Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game, but we'll have to wait for that. Uh, at number five, I have Stanford, where Andrew Luck coming back, bringing them to, a, I believe, a top five rating. He'll be a great quarterback this year, maybe Heisman winner as long as he stays healthy. And though they lost their uh, coach, Jim Harbaugh, they should have a great year in the Pac-12 and maybe maybe upset Oregon. I'm not sure, though. They'll be playing really good. Now these next two I'm kind of introduce together, but number four, LSU, and number three, Oregon. Now why I introduce them together? Oh, um, it's because they play each other the first week of the season. That's right. Finally, a meaningful game that first week of the season. While Alabama could be playing Citadel or somebody, or uh, <laughs> CMU is going off to, like, uh, Kentucky the second week. You know, and CMU here is playing South Carolina State for the first week. And, you know, you see all those games, you're like, oh, I really don't care, it's kind of like the preseason. Well, Oregon and LSU finally got together and gave you a great game opening week. Uh, tragedy for one of the two teams that happens with it. But back to LSU with Les Miles playing Death Valley. It's going to be another good team. Not quite the premier team in the uh, SEC right now, but should be good enough to really do some damage there. Uh, maybe a dark horse to the national championship, but we'll have to see what happens at the top. Number three, Oregon returned all their returned most of their starters, lacking in the wide receiver position, but uh, Thomas is still there, and then the running back core of Barner and of course, Michael James, uh, electric, they're trying to be faster, and Chip Keller's really got a team up there right now, and you better watch out, because Oregon, I don't think they're going to be able to solve them still. Uh, number two, Oklahoma, who, Big 12 superpower, Laundry Jones will be doing really good. They have most of their starters back, so watch out. They'll be cruising through the Big 12, I believe, this year. And, of course, at number one, there's Alabama who, you know, national championship a couple years ago, I feel like they're the best team in the SEC, and why not go with the best team in the best conference? So there's that. There's the top 25. So it'll be down, if you want to look at it in real form, it'll be down right below this video. And feel free to take a look and discuss it with me. But I'm really excited for this year because we're going to do. I'm going to be doing a lot with college football and pro football, and I'll be having top 25 picks all the all, going through all the top 25 all this year I'll bring in some guest pickers from around here and I'm even gonna have I have a whiteboard outside my dorm and we're gonna have like the pulse of the campus and they're gonna be hopefully there'll be some people giving me their input saying who's gonna win I might talk to some people we'll see if we can get them on here but it's gonna be a really exciting year and of course I'll be typing some more here in a bit and little tidbits and stuff and yep so that's it for this week's, uh, this week's, or just I should say this show.